So for any audition, um, they'll tell you what they want you to play or what they um, expect to hear from you. Um, so for you, Symphony, they'll say, oh, prepare a piece that's like 15 minutes long and be prepared to do some sight reading. So, okay, great. You know that you have the freedom to pick whatever piece you want. Um, and then you know that there's going to be sight reading, which you can practice for um, and work on. And you guys are so good at sight reading because of Sight Reading Factory. Um, or for a college audition, they may say, prepare a Bach unaccompanied cello suite plus a romantic concerto. Like, Great. That's what I will be working on um, to get ready for this audition. Or for an orchestra or a festival, they may say, prepare these six orchestra um, excerpts. If you haven't ever done those before, they can be a little bit scary because it's not like um, a solo piece that you've been working towards since you were little and you and your teacher always have a new solo piece every year. Sometimes this is the first time you've ever had to learn an orchestral excerpt just by itself to play for an audition, but I will show you some resources um, to find those if it's your first time. For a lot of colleges, if they ask for that, they usually put it on their website um, as a PDF so that you don't have to go searching for it. But if you do, um, they're not too hard to find. And I'll show you my book of <laughs> orchestra excerpts. Um, and your teachers are always a good resource for that too because they tend to have compiled them over time. So I'll show you my book and I'll show you um, some online resources too. So one way to find excerpts is by going to imslp.com um, and just searching for the piece that you're looking for. So I'm looking for, let's say, Don Juan. Go in the little search box. Oh, here, here you are. Then we go here, and then you go to parts. And then that's where you can find the part that you need. So oh, here's violin one. And oh, we gotta wait 15 seconds because I don't have an IMSLP account. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, so then you'll be able to look for any piece that's um, public domain. The only problem is sometimes the editions are not amazing, but let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so this one's really easy to read. That's awesome. Um, and it looks like a pretty clean edition. So then you look at your audition requirements and it says um, Don Juan beginning. So here all the way to um, like eight after C. Basically, we're trying to get here. So then you're like, okay, awesome. So then you go ahead and you print this whole page here. And then um, I'll show you how to like mark it up too. But this is a great resource for finding excerpts. Um, another great resource is if you just search in like Google for what you're looking for, like you put like Don Juan violin excerpt, sometimes um, colleges will post PDFs of excerpts that they're requiring their college students to learn for orchestra auditions and you can just go uh, get them off the site and have them. Um, and so that's another really great resource. Another resource is um, or uh, orchestraexcerpts.com. Um, some services on this website you have to pay for, but some you don't. So like, here's a little lesson on how to play Don Juan, and this man will just like break it down for you. Oh, that's great. And then you can see, oh, there's like deluxe edition here with like bowings and fingerings and practice tips. You can also rent or super deluxe. No one needs that. Just kidding, maybe. Um, but then there's free resources down here. So like, here's the excerpt. So if you didn't find it on IMSLP, maybe you'll find it here. You can see that this is the same edition as they have on IMSLP. And then down here, there's a couple different recordings um, of different uh, symphonies playing this piece, which is awesome. And they even have the metronome marking, which is really great for when you're trying to figure out like how fast, um, how fast you should be aiming to perform your excerpt. It's also good because it shows you that there's a range. Um, this is a newer piece, so <laughs> relatively. Um, so the metronome marking, you see there isn't like a lot of discrepancy between these couple orchestras here, but sometimes if you look down at like, if you look in a Mozart excerpt, um, because there are so many different interpretations, you'll see a lot a wider range of metronome markings. Um, so just something to consider. So this is the binder that I keep my um, orchestra excerpts in and it's not really organized right now because I think after my last audition I was just like get out of my life um but I'll show you what it looks like so 
here I keep uh, extra copies of my um, excerpts so that when I'm playing for people I can have them look off of those copies. And then here I have these little tabs where I have the um, excerpt and the composer and everything. So let's look at La Mer. So I have it in a binder obviously so I'm not like dealing with a bunch of loose pages. Um, and then I have them tabbed so that when at auditions, sometimes they ask for like a different order for the first round and the second round. And then that way I can easily just move them around in my binder so that during the actual performance, I'm not having to like go look for them. Um, then let's see, in this excerpt, I have sectioned off the parts where, or like the starting point and then the ending point. And again, it's just something to track so that when I'm performing, I don't have to like think about where that is. And then I'll see if sometimes I put little, oh yeah, like this one. This is the Mendelssohn Scherzo, um, right? Yeah. Um, and then, so I have these little like tab things here that are like sticky notes kind of, and those I can move around, um, which are good because sometimes for like a preliminary round, they'll have like a shorter section and then later for the second round they'll have a longer section so then I can move it around depending um, what they're asking for. Um, and then I just have all my pages in these little like plastic sleeves so that if it's raining or something I don't have to worry about the ink running. So one of the things that you really can plan for is um, preparing as far as finding the venue learning about how much time it's going to take you to get there, what the venue looks like, um, and in some cases even um, there are opportunities to play in the venue before your actual audition, which helps so much um, just with your mental preparation. So let's say that you are going to do a college audition at UPS and you get your time, let's say it's going to be 1.30 in the afternoon and they tell you where it is, but maybe you haven't been to UPS before. So the first time you go to UPS should not be on your audition day um, because you're already gonna be kind of stressed out because you have to play and you have to audition and it's just stressful and scary. So you can eliminate that, that stress by going there early, like days early, driving there, timing how long it takes. The best is if you can, like let's say your audition's on like a Saturday. If you can do your test run like the Saturday before, like the same day of the week, because traffic, you know, is different on the weekends than on the weekdays. So you do your test run on Saturday before your audition um, and see how long it takes. And then you go, you get out of your car and then you go into the school and you find um, your warm up space. So maybe like they're gonna have the practice rooms downstairs open for your uh, warm up. And then you also find the hall. That way, that whole anxiety of like, I don't even know what it's going to be like. Are we going to be in a classroom or a hall? And I don't know where the hall is. Where's UPS? And how long is it going to take to get there? Where should I park? Um, that part is all then taken care of. And you don't even have to think about it on your audition day. You can just focus on like your beautiful sound, your cool personality, and you're not um, coming in like stressed out about where you're supposed to go. And the same thing could be true even for solo ensembles. So if you're someone who feels very anxious about like mm, going to a place that you've never been before, which sometimes I feel that, um, then you can eliminate that by just going there ahead of time. Um, yeah, so like if I have an audition at like, let's say Tacoma Symphony, um, and that's, I mean, a venue that I've been to a billion times, but I would wanna know like what my time is and where it's gonna be. Like, is it gonna be at the Pantages? Is it gonna be in the Broadway Center? Um, and then I would also wanna know, like, is it Farmer's Market Day? Or are there a bunch of performances downtown that day? Um, all of those things just factor in for how long it's gonna to take to get there and what parking's gonna be like. And the worst thing in the world is like, being a little late and like trying to find a parking spot and you can't find it and then you're like running to the place and you don't know where to go. Um, so do yourself a favor and scout that all out way ahead of time. And that way too, when you're um, practicing leading up to your audition, you're actually picturing mentally the space that you're gonna play in and it just helps it feel a little bit more real and a little less um, scary and mysterious. 
So what to bring with you to your audition. It's a little bit of a personal journey, but um, just I have some hints and tips for you. So obviously you've done your test drive. Good job, you know where to go. You have your binder full of the materials you need, whether it's your solo piece, orchestra audition excerpts, or whatever the, the requirement is for your audition. Um, but then you probably also wanna bring some snacks with you. So sometimes auditions go way long and they fall behind and you're stuck sitting there for a while. Um, and the worst thing would be if you were really hungry. So some people obviously do the banana thing. Supposedly potassium is like a natural beta blocker which supposedly helps you feel less nervous and stops like shaking. I don't know about that. Um, but bananas can be delicious so and if it makes you feel better, you know the placebo effect is a real thing, whether or not potassium helps or not. So, banana, why not? Um, but other healthy snacks, just so that you can um, keep yourself well fed and your stomach isn't rumbling during your audition. Um, also, it can be very helpful to bring headphones so that you can listen to recordings um, or else drown out the people that are around you um, so that you don't have to hear them practice and have the whole like, wait, is that how it's supposed to go? Wait. Are they better than me? Wait, oh my God, what am I doing here? You don't need that right now. Um, so try out those people, um, try out those thoughts. Um, a book can be nice, something to take your mind off of, you know, the impending doom of your audition. Just kidding, it'll be fine. Um, and then water. Um, and then as far as what to wear, you know, it's like a job interview. So you wanna wear something that uh, looks professional and makes you look good but also something that you have definitely practiced in before. So if you're a violinist and you're gonna play standing, maybe we don't wear those high heels for the first time ever today. Maybe we practice in those first, or you know, we wear something else. Um, but whatever it is, just make sure it's something that you feel really confident in, that you can play in, um, and that isn't gonna add to your stress at all. Um, so whatever I think I'm gonna wear to an audition, I usually make sure that I practice it to make sure there's not like a weird strap that keeps falling down or like, I can't actually go like this if I'm wearing it. Um, and same with shoes, whatever. So the advice for today is really just like practice run all the time. Um, see if you can recreate this audition at home as many times as possible, just so it feels really natural and normal. The thing I struggle with the most of auditions is being influenced by the people around me and feeling um, psyched out a little bit by the things that I hear from other people. Um, so th there's this thing called the door effect, which is that everything sounds like a million times better through a door. So uh, sometimes you're practicing in a practice room and you can hear the person next to you and you're like, what, they sound amazing. But it's the door effect, man, you don't know. Um, and some people at auditions are very naughty and they actually try to psych, psych other people out. And one of the weirdest ways that people do this, which is just this universal audition thing, is by playing an excerpt that is not on the list. So you're warming up and you're you're listening and you're like, what? Like Don Juan is not on the list. Is it? Is it? And then you're like going on your phone trying to like check the list again and be like, I don't know that one. Why are they playing it? Why is someone next to me playing this audition that's not even on the list today? What are they playing at? Dude, it's mind games. And same kind of thing at like a uh, solo ensemble you hear it all the time. Someone will be practicing a piece they are not even playing that day. Why are they doing that? Why would they do that? It's mental games, man. Don't fall into those traps. Um, so the best thing you can do is really, really try to just ignore everyone around you. Like totally go in a little bubble. You focus on you, you focus on the things that you need to warm up on and get ready for today. And you do not listen to the people around you and try to measure yourselves with them. Because here's the other thing too. Just because you sound good in a practice room doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to perform well. So don't worry about them. Um, you know, you wanna be friendly to the people around you and be like a good sport and a good uh, you know, music community member, but you really don't need to get distracted by being influenced or being intimidated by the things around you. So that's when those headphones come into play, just pop them on and just, just get away from that. And just remember that like you have no idea what their, their deal is and how they're gonna sound when they perform and you, and you won't hear it probably. Um, so don't worry, just focus on you.
So know the job is an important one for you guys because you're students and most all the stuff that you're going to be auditioning for is um, within the, the student lens. So when you're doing a festival audition or a youth symphony audition or a college audition, keep in mind that they know that you're a student. So perfection is not something that um, that is achievable <laughs> or is something that they're necessarily looking for. So let's take the example of college audition again. Let's think about UPS. So you're coming in there and you're playing, you're demonstrating what you can do and they're looking at that through the lens of your student and they're thinking, is this person going to be good to work with? Are they going to be receptive to my ideas? Are they going to be an asset to our community here? Um, do they want to learn from me? Do they want to be at this school? So it's important for you to know like what they're looking for and what you're actually auditioning for. And most of the time as a student, um, so much of it has to do with like, can, is this person teachable? Like, um, and if you have ever taken a lesson with, like let's say someone at UPS, um, they are not just listening to your sound, but they're seeing how you react when they give you advice. Are you being defensive? Are you trying to do what they're telling you to do? Are you saying like, well, I think it should be this way, or my old teacher said it should be this way. Um, or are you like breaking down every time they, you know, give you a criticism? These are all things that they're looking for. And of course, it's different if you're trying to audition for like a professional orchestra because then the job is, is a little bit different. But um, that I think sometimes can help people feel a little bit more relaxed when they, they're reminded that it's okay, you're supposed to be a student and what, um, what the committee is looking for when they're listening to you is not not perfection and not a polished adult sound necessarily, but just like, can I work with this student? So just something to keep in mind. And the last piece of advice, and we talk to you guys about this a lot at Soda, but be cool. Like, win or lose, you need to be cool, man. Um, because, first of all, everyone that is that you're competing with or that is um, also at Solo Ensemble or also at this audition is someone you will probably run into again. Um, and, you know, the music community is a small one and that's part of why it's special, but um, you want to make sure that you are friendly and nice and you're not playing those mind games that we talked about. You're not trying to psych out, you know, your peers um, and you're not throwing a big fuss if you win or lose, but you just, you know, you know that everyone has their good days and their bad days and you stay cool and you stay nice and you stay professional so just always kind of keep that in the back of your mind that you know be cool man win or lose <laughs> okay hope you guys are doing great i miss you very much um check out some of these resources so that you can start thinking about auditions in your near or far future um i'll post them at the end of this video so that you can take a look okay